Hey friends, it's Shayla here. So today's vlog is going to be rereading Dream and Sun. Now, I was reading this as it released, so I had a lot of time between some of these volumes. So I think I just enjoyed being with the characters again, but I didn't really love how this one ended. So I've decided to reread it kind of straight through and see how I feel about the story. So this is going to be an adventure. This might be the first series all year that ends up not making it back to my shelves. We will see. Okay, so I just finished rereading volume one of Dream and Sun, and I did not ever want to see how hard she hints at the end pairing in this first volume, but I see it a lot more now, and... Like... Okay, it's there. I see it. Do I still ship it? I don't know. Maybe I do a little more this time. Oh, I don't know. My favorite is still my favorite. I've been pretty vocal about who my favorite is. I'm trying to be fairly vague in this first part of this vlog because from here on out, it's spoilers for the whole series. So if you don't want to be spoiled, click off this video and I'll see you in another one. But if you're here for the spoilers, I like Shimana, but I like her better with Zen. I like that she lets loose with him and she's just herself around him. And yeah, I mean, the landlord Taiga is there for her, but not in the same way. So anyhow, on to volume two. Okay, finished volume two and more hints are definitely there in this volume. Takano was not as subtle about that pairing as I initially thought on a first read through. Again, I still wanted Zen the Panda Man to win and we know Zen the Panda Man doesn't win. But I love the character progression that Zen still goes through. And so I still like the series for that so far. He, I mean, in the second volume, he finally admits that he likes Shimana and all those kinds of things. And the landlord still being like sneaky and being an adult and ugh, I just I struggle um but again we're dealing with Shimana's feelings for Asuki here in the beginning and things are going to start changing here in the next volume or two so yeah I don't I don't know I'm still kind of on the fence about it but this is definitely not going to go back on my favorites shelf like it initially was um, whether I keep it in my collection or not is yet to be seen. I mean, seriously, we've had a similar panel to this, if it'll focus, like four or five times now, and I'm in volume three. So clearly the mangaka wasn't being subtle about it. I just didn't want to pick up on it on my first read. And there we are again, you know, characters rooting just for them. So... Yeah, I guess I was just dense on my first read through. And volume three complete. Um, in this one, we get Zen confessing to Shumana and he kisses her and it's adorableness. And they still don't win in the end. And it makes me so sad. But um, I had forgotten like the dynamic between him and his brother, Zen and his brother. Um, and I really like how that plays out a lot. And I still love Zen as a character. I think I always will. He'll always be best boy to me. But I I guess I can understand Shimana's feelings a bit better in this read-through than I did the first time. Just because I was so blinded by the adorableness that is Zen and his panda-loving heart. We get a lot more answers and dynamic through this one. And so I'm excited to continue on. I'm excited to dive into Volume 4. Alrighty, and Volume 4 done. We do take more of a focus on... Tigasan and you know like like I say as I read this it's so obvious now I hate that I fought it so much on a first read through and I'm able to enjoy it for what it is now but yeah I don't think this is going to be a favorite anymore like it was initially but I'm still enjoying it I don't think it's going to leave the collection at this point and again we'll see how I feel as we get further into the series Shimana has officially confessed to Taigasan and Zen is sad because the back and forth for him because you know she always runs to Zen when things aren't going well with Taiga and blah 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 anyways 
Moving on to volume five. All right, and volume five complete. So in this one, we're definitely dealing with the Taiga and his former teacher situation. And yeah, that's a whole adventure in and of itself that I wasn't remembering. I don't know why I didn't remember that detail. But yeah, I think it's going to be really just an interesting adventure to keep going. Still kind of feeling the same. I don't think it's going to be on my favorites anymore, but I still am enjoying it enough that I'm pretty sure it's going to stay in the collection now that I've hit the halfway point. We'll see how I feel by the end. I'm at the halfway point exactly. I've got five more volumes to go. And it's time to move on to the next one. Alrighty, and volume six complete. And in this one... There is so much back and forth. I This is the part where I started to get really frustrated with the series, I remember. Because the back and forth between Shimada and Taiga was starting to escalate and happen often. This part of me still feels like that could have been shortened. But at the same time, I understand the back and forth better, I think, this time around. Just because you are dealing with an age gap style romance and there's obviously things with that. Now this is smaller for the age gap side of things compared to some that I read. I mean, he's 21 and she's in high school. So, you know, it's still a decent gap, but not as big as some of the other ones that I read. Like Takane and Han is a bigger gap than this one. Like I understand it better, but that doesn't mean I'm necessarily enjoying it better. I still get frustrated by it. So yeah. Anyways, on to volume seven. So why are Japanese parents so meddlesome, especially when they're adults? Like, I need to understand the cultural, like, reason for that. Because when you're reading manga, it's just frustrating because it's like, he's a grown man. Like, back off, daddy. You have no right to control his life. Maybe I just got really lucky in the parental department and my parents didn't try to control me. They encouraged me to chase the things I wanted and do the things I wanted to do. They didn't force me into a career. They didn't force me into anything. But Japanese parents seem to, like, have ideas for their kids and, like, force them on them to the point where their kids are miserable. And I, I'm i sure that happens in their culture, but I don't think it's all of their culture. I don't know. Maybe I'm just blind and oblivious to that and have no clue. I don't know. But it's very prevalent here, obviously, with Taiga and his father. And then we have Shimana's birthday, and obviously they're pulled apart for that day. But she spends the day with Zen, and it's so cute. And this was the point where it's like, yes, Zen's gonna win after all. But we know that he doesn't. So, anyhow, from here, I'm now gonna move on to volume eight and then share more thoughts with you because that's the whole point of this vlog. I'm getting a little punch drunk, can you tell? Alrighty, and we are in more meddlesome daddy territory where dad's threatening Taiga's job, he's threatening to sell the house, all this stuff to keep away from Shimana. Which is like the only female he's ever shown interest in since high school. And yeah, she's young. But the extremes this man is willing to go to are insane considering his own personal history and he's just a button. I don't like him. But the whole dynamic with the four of them that all live together is always really nice. I think that's why I kept reading the series is because I loved that dynamic and the way that they all grow. I'm really excited to continue on. And again, this isn't going to be one of my favorites and that's okay. But I still really enjoy it. On reread, I'm enjoying it more than I expected to, if I'm honest. I expected to feel bitter and angry, but it was there the whole time. Like, all the hints were there. Like, it was very clear from the beginning that Taiga was the main love interest, and it was a choice. And, yeah, I still think Zen should win in the end, but I know that he doesn't, and it's okay, so. Anyhow, moving on to volume nine. All right, the penultimate volume in this volume, we definitely get a lot of solidifying of feelings and confessing of feelings finally. And now he's getting transferred for work and daddy's going to really cut him off then. But mom likes Shimana, even though dad doesn't. And yeah. And Zen's little love interest has been introduced. And I, I like her okay 
but I like the just the camaraderie and friendship that Zen and Shimana have. It's very precious. Zen will always be best boy to me. But again, I like I've been liking Taiga a lot more on this second read. I understand him a bit more and some things like that. So I I kind of sound like a broken record in this vlog, and I'm really, really sorry, guys. But it's the truth. I mean, Ichigo Takano knows what they're doing. Every time I've read an Ichigo to Takano story, it's always made sense. I still think I prefer Orange over Dream and Sun. And that's just a personal feeling. I feel very emotionally attached to Orange where I don't to this. And I think that's just because Best Boy didn't win. <laughs> I don't know. This is not Zen, by the way. He's on volume three. But yeah, I still like it and I still, I still enjoy it. It'll still get read. All right, on to volume 10. Okay, and reread complete. Um, the one thing that this age gap does well, in my opinion, is that with Taiga being transferred for work for two years, it gave her a chance to grow up and complete high school before they progressed to the end. And I appreciated that they did that rather than trying to force the relationship to move more quickly while she was still in high school that job transfer just kind of built in that gap where they could just converse and still talk and get to know one another but physically there wasn't any pressure to progress things and I really appreciated that in an age gap so yeah that's kind of how I feel I still like it I like at the end of this volume that you get an extra side story with Zen and this cutie here um I really grow to like them through that side story. I wish it was just a canon part of the volume rather than a side story personally. But yeah, I just really enjoyed the journey of rereading this and learning that, you know, I still like it. I don't love it. It's good to know exactly where I stand about it now. And yeah, that's it for this vlog. I hope it was interesting enough for you. I know parts of it got really repetitive. But in general, Zen is still my favorite character. He always will be. Zen is just my precious little boy. I want to protect him. I want him to be happy. I want him to live happily ever after. And I hate Taiga's dad. His mom, I like. She's sassy and not afraid to stand up for what she wants. And I like that. So, yeah, that's where we're at. And again, if you like this vlog, let me know down below if you want me to continue to make these for other series that I reread. Um, people are asking for the Neon Genesis Evangelion one because that's my July pick. So I will be doing that one. So yeah, just tell me what you guys like to see down below. If you want to see a little more like of my everyday life in these vlogs, usually I'm just kind of taking a day sitting in my chair and reading so you don't really get like a change of scenery or anything much in these. So if you want me to jazz them up at all, let me know. I am totally fine with feedback on these. So yeah, let me know if there's any tweaks you guys want me to make to these and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.